friends, welcome back to Omnisci Approved. Um, today I'm going to be doing a quick video that I've wanted to do for a little while based strictly off of a couple things that I've seen online within the Warhammer community and the overall mini painting community. Um, something I've seen, I've seen several memes of this, uh, basically saying, you know, you go to watch a painting tutorial, the moment they bring out their airbrush, you just close down the tutorial and move on. Um, a lot of people don't want to get an airbrush. A lot of people are intimidated by airbrushes. Um, myself included for a very long time. I was very, uh, I was, uh, very shy of actually using my airbrush. Um, but there's a couple things to that. It's actually not that difficult, um, to acquire an airbrush when it comes to financially. It's not that difficult to acquire a setup that will work for you to learn. Um, and once you actually get the hang of it, you will put out results a lot easier than what you uh, think you're going to be able to with a lot less effort. Um, the p things I'm going to show you are going to be the airbrushes that I personally own as well as, um, as well as how I started and kind of what I did to get started. Um, alongside this video will be another video upload that will show you me using the cheapest airbrush I own to paint a model. Um, shows you how easy it is and even with a lower quality airbrush how you'll still be able to get good results you can be proud of um, with a few very important steps in between just some things I've learned through trial and error. Um, the first airbrush I'm going to show you is the airbrush that is my is my highest quality one. It's the one that I, I use for my most uh, my most fine detail work. Um, it is uh, Badger Airbrush Company um, Sotar 2020. Um, it is a very very fine needle. Um, the way airbrushes work is there is a needle that you move back and forth to release paint into an airstream. The finer the needle, the finer the stream of paint you can have is. The finer the stream of paint, the more control you have over it. Um, so this is the one I have. It is currently on Amazon for $125. Um, one thing that I did, and something that if you are interested in getting a Badger airbrush, I encourage you to do, go on Facebook and follow Badger's Facebook page. Every year, the owner of Badger, for his birthday, puts their airbrushes on sale for the basically the price of his age. Um, I got my uh, Badger 2020 during that sale for around $50. 50 I, I forget the exact number, but it was in the mid to low 50s. Um, granted, it took about six months to get to me because of the influx of orders, um, but that's a way that you can get a really high quality airbrush for not a lot of money. Um, but that's something to look at down the line. I do love this airbrush. I recommend uh, anyone looking for a detail brush to go this way. Um, the next brush that I have, it's one step down in quality, or it's a couple steps down in quality, if I'm being honest, um, is the Neo for Iwata. Um, Iwata is another really good um, airbrush manufacturer. Um, I've heard people that are really big fans of both Badger and Iwata. Some, some will pick one or the other. I, I've used... Um, and Awada Eclipse is probably the best one that I've used by Awada, and it was really smooth, really, really good. Um, but I still like my Badger, personal preference. However, something important to know for the Neo. Um, the price on this on Amazon is uh, $71.63 with free shipping. For any of the Neos, I recommend you go to your local store. Um, stores like Hobby Town, there's one near me that carries airbrushes. Um, your local hobby shop may be able to order them. But I got, um, I've seen Neos for as low as 40 to $50. Um, and it's, you know, a really good deal at that point. Um, I've had two of them um, in my airbrushing time. The first one did break. That was due to my own error. It was 100% user error. Um, so something to keep that in mind. But um, the Neos are made for Iwata, not by Iwata. Um, I'm not sure who the actual manufacturer of the Neo is, but it is basically... They took a lower quality manufacturer and licensed them to make a airbrush for them at a lower price point. It is still really good. It is leagues above the cheapest airbrush I'm about to show you. But it's not going to be the best brush that you will ever own if you do get into this. Now, what I'm about to show you is the airbrush that I started with. The entire kit I started with, um, my lovely wife purchased not this exact kit, but one very close to it. Um, for me. Um, so this is the Master Airbrush Multipurpose Gravity Fed Dual Action Airbrush Kit. 
Um, it comes with your um, air compressor, a condenser, um, which is this thing here. Um, this is what allows you to adjust um, your, your uh, pressure. You have some airbrush holders there and you have all this good stuff. Um, for $129 or $100, there's a slightly better one um, that you can get. It's a stronger air compressor. Um, you can get it for $150 uh, for $160, it looks like. Um, this is not a bad kit. Um, the air compressor especially, I really like my master air compressor. I've had it for several years. It runs like a champ, even though I have abused the hell out of it. Um, which is what you do when you turn it into a workhorse, as I kind of have over the years. The Master's Airbrush, um, the Dual Action Gravity Fed Airbrush, and I'll go over what all of that means in a minute, um, will run you, if you buy the airbrush by itself, around $20. Um, so it's super cheap. It's got a decent sized needle um, for doing mini painting. It may be a little bit big, but I've been painting Space Marines with it recently and it's doing just fine. Um, I don't use it for detail work because of the size of the spray. But once you get used to it and get a hang on it, you can do a good job with it. Um, the one thing about it that I did run into, because I've had three of them, the one thing I've run into is I had one that the needle had some very, very small burrs in it. And what that can do is can cause the paint to splatter as it comes out, which is not the ideal, but it's something that, you know, can happen. Just be aware it is a cheaper airbrush. That's something that can happen. Um... Regardless of what airbrush you decide to go with, a few things that are very important. You do want to make sure you get a dual action airbrush. Um, the, the lever on there, what it means by dual action, when you take your airbrush, you press down on the lever to allow the air to go through. Then you pull back to release paint. Pulling back moves the needle backwards, which releases bits of paint. So that is what they mean by dual action. So you have two separate actions that control um, that control the flow of air and the flow of paint. That's very, very important. Um, especially for painting miniatures like we do, you need to be able to control that. And one of the things that's the most difficult to learn when starting out with an airbrush is um, how to control your amount of paint. Too much paint going through will end up clogging up details, will turn into like this runny mess. Um, you want to do more air than paint when you do spray, if that makes any sense. Um, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty good. Um, and then the second part is gravity fed. So you see the pot, the paint pot, is on the top of the actual body of the airbrush. That means as you're actually using it, it uses gravity to pull the paint through. Um, that is ideal for mini painting because we're going to use lower air pressures than what we're going to be using than if we were painting, say you know, an actual piece of art or I'm not saying models aren't art, but like a piece of art on a canvas or if we were doing like larger things that required more air pressure. The other option you can kind of see on the booklet, the one on the bottom there is a siphon feed that uses the, the negative pressure created by the airflow to suck paint up that little tube out of the jar. That requires higher air pressures to work well. It's not ideal for mini painting, though I have seen people use them um, not my personal preference. Um, so, as you can see, it's not unreasonably expensive, especially if you catch them on sale or marked down like this one is now. It's $100 um, for an airbrush compressor and your brush to get you started. Um, so, that's, that's not a bad price point to be at. Uh, it, it's definitely worth looking into. And as you get better, you can move up and get your better airbrushes and continue to learn. Um, one of the reasons I do encourage this for your first airbrush is you will break your first airbrush. That's just going to happen. Um, and I had people tell me that when I first got mine and I kind of had the idea of like, no, that's not going to happen. I'm going to be careful. And sure, sure enough, I broke my first airbrush. It just, it just was what it was. Um, another thing that's important with this one that I really like is it comes with detailed instructions on how to disassemble the airbrush, clean it. Um, it comes with some cleaning tools, so there's a lot of good to that. Here's actually kind of the, the breakdown on how to disassemble and clean it really well. Um, everything unscrews, comes apart. You know, you've got your spring action there. You've got everything. So this is a breakdown of everything on the internals of it um, that you could potentially need to clean. Most of your cleaning is going to take place up here where you take apart the nozzle, um, the little pin in the center of it, and that's where kind of the pain for this one comes in. Um, the Master Airbrush uses a rubber washer. You can actually see it there. Um, you can actually see it there on the little diagram, on the little, the little pin. 
the thing that I'm kind of hovering over. Over time, taking that on and off, it will wear the rubber. If that seal becomes bad, you'll have paint seeping through it and it will really cause splatter and it's just not that good. That's actually the failure point for both of my masters that have failed was this area here. Either the washer wore down or the actual threading um, on the back of it broke. Now the threading breaking could have just been me being too rough with it, but that is something that you need to be aware of. Um, but like I say, for $20, you can't complain. Um, and the current one I've had, I've had for over a year and I've used it multiple times a week for a, over a year and, um, it's done rather well. So I, don't know, I think it's just a good starting point. Um, so that's just kind of my two cents on that. I do think that airbrushing is an amazing, uh, thing to have in your arsenal. Um, everyone should give it a shot. Everyone should try, um, airbrushing at some point if you are even remotely into, um, painting miniatures. Um, and this is not a bad way to do it. Uh, another thing, going back to the overall kit, the air compressor. Um, I've had this air compressor for going on three and a half, four years maybe. It's kind of hard for me to tell because time is weebly wobbly for me sometimes. But I've had it for a very long time and it works very, very well. And I have not been the best, um, the best person in the world about maintaining it. Uh, so it's got a lot of it's got a lot of perks to it. I'm a huge fan of this particular air compressor. There are better ones on the market, but this is one that I am going to once my one I have now dies, I'm probably going to buy another one because this one's just done so well for me. Um, so the point I'm making with this is, even though I don't use the Master all the time, I'll use the Badger. So I'll use my Sotar 2020. Um, I'll use you know my Neo from time to time. Um, even though I'm using these different airbrushes, all of them work with the same compressor. So that kit, that initial kit that I started with is still being used and is still giving me back dividends on what I put into it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really good. I genuinely like it. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's something that I really like that initial kit. So that's my recommendation for anyone looking to get into airbrushing. Do not look at an airbrush as a scary thing. Do not look at it as something where oh, this person's just trying to, you know, make me go out and spend money. That's not what we're doing when we put up these airbrushing tutorials. Um, it is just if you want to get into painting, if painting is a thing, is a part of the hobby that you enjoy as much as anything else. For me personally, I enjoy the painting of models just as much as I enjoy playing the games. It's just like I'm an all-hobby person. Um, so it's just kind of, for me, it was just a natural progression. I, I've put together some really cool, really, really decent paint jobs with minimal effort once you understand how to use the brush um and uh um, like i said i'm going to be doing a painting tutorial um specifically with the airbrush and in that tutorial i will also include a small breakdown on how to use the airbrush um and just kind of use that as an example and i will do it all with the master airbrush my old beat up master um 20 dollar airbrush um i will use that and we'll be able to see what i come up with um and it will be using the airbrush with traditional painting techniques um, to get something done. So I appreciate anyone for watching. I do hope that this kind of made you, um, made you realize that it's not super difficult to get into an airbrush, kind of had you rethink your, um, preconceptions about airbrushing as far as acquiring the materials. Um, and, uh, one final note on that is this is like any other skill. You are relearning what you've already taught yourself about painting to, while using an airbrush. It's a completely different skill set. Um, so just getting an airbrush will not make you a better painter overnight. You still have to practice and work at it. But what I have found is once you've gotten used to it, it makes it easier and faster to do a higher quality of paint work with the airbrush. Um, so it's definitely worth the time investment. And I've been doing it for a couple of years. I'm by far not the best at it. I'm really not. I'm just now, just now getting to a point to where I feel like I can consistently produce effects I like. Um, and so that's, that's, that's me. That's my curb on it. Um, I did, was not the most studious of learners. Some people can pick it up and go in a couple days and be where I'm at now. So, um, give it a shot. If you're even remotely interested, please look into getting, not necessarily this kit, but find a kit you like. This is just the one that I recommend. Um, yeah. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it each and every one of you, and I hope that this has inspired you to move forward. Keep an eye out for the new airbrush tutorial that will be coming out in the next couple days. Um, hopefully in the next couple days. It depends on how life goes, of course. But uh, as always, thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please hit the subscribe button. If you want to see more, ding that bell. Um, all that wonderful stuff that YouTube likes for us to do. And um, as always, this transmission has been OmniSci approved. Thank you for watching.